Um, okay, thank okay. you. So that will be good. All right, we got 16 on the card. Yeah, 707. Okay. Q, can you hear me? Hey, Pastor, can you hear me now? I think I was in a bad area. Okay, yeah, be careful. Yeah, we just wanted to uh, know the family was okay, and I see that the arrangements have been made for Saturday at 2? Yes, sir. Saturday at 2 o'clock um, at Simonia uh, Baptist Church, and it'll be a great side service. Okay, okay, okay. Did you need friendship to do anything? Um, the guys are going to help out. Uh, I met with Rick over there today. Um, the guys are going to help us uh, with the parking. Uh, getting cars in and just parked out in the field. Um, but that's all, uh, that's our thing. That's all we need to help with. And I, I appreciate you guys' prayers. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Okay, family. Some of the family might have didn't know uh, Q lost his grandma. And uh, so the celebration is this Saturday at 2. Uh, yeah, Rick did send out a text to, um, I'm trying to see, okay, the address. Okay, he got the website of the church, so. So I guess that will have the address to it. So we'll know how to get there. Yeah, Columbia County. Okay, okay, it's right down Louisville Road. Sean, I thought, that's who I thought it was close by us. 543 Louisville Road, all right. All right, Q, thank you. Thanks, fam. Let's get started. Miss Latoya Halls, how you doing? <laughs> Thank you, Paula. That ain't Hello. Y'all, good to see y'all. All right, all right. We got we got to. Uh... Good evening, everybody. Good evening, Ronnie. Good evening. All right. Good, good. <clears throat> all right, we're gonna get started. Uh, let me share my screen here, and. Uh... So remind me, family, to uh, remind the family again about the uh, home going for Q's grandma this Saturday too. And then our women's empowerment service this Sunday morning as well. So it's going to be a great time this weekend. All right. Thank God for our community sharing. Let's go to our devotion. Our Jesus calling for October 27th. Here we are at the end of the 10th month. Christ says, as you become increasingly aware of my presence, you find it easier to discern the way you should go. Wow. This is one of the practical benefits of living close to me. Instead of wondering about what is on the road ahead or worrying about what you should do if or when you can concentrate on staying in communication with me when you actually arrive at a choice point in your life i will show you which direction to go hallelujah many people are so preoccupied with future plans and decisions that they fail to see choices they need to make today without any conscious awareness they make their habitual responses people who live this way find a dullness creeping into their lives they sleepwalk through their days following well-worn paths of routine i the creator of the universe. I am the most creative being imaginable. I would not leave you circling in deeply rooted paths. Instead, I will lead you along fresh trails of adventure, revealing to you things you did not know. Stay in communication with me. Follow my guiding presence. It's all about prayer, family. It's all about staying in communication with God, especially now staying in prayer. 
We always encourage you to develop a consistent prayer life. The prayers of the righteous avails much. Get you a consistent time of day. Early morning is always preferable for some. Maybe e midday, maybe late evening. Whatever God lays on your heart as a good time for you when you can spend some quality time with God. Just just five minutes of just 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 quality, quiet time, solitude time with God. It would be certainly be worth it. Early morning is good to start your day in communion. Commun communication, communing in communion with God. This is one of the practical benefits of living close to me. I like that. Instead of wondering about what's going to happen tomorrow or worrying about it, when you stay in communication with God, God is right there to help you make decisions. Amen. Amen. All right, our fearless leader, Deacon Pollock, we're going to ask him to lead us in prayer tonight as we get ready to open our time of fellowship and word together. Let us bow our heads. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we come thanking you, God, for you being the God you are. There's no other God like you, Lord. We give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. Oh, we just thank you for another opportunity to come together and study your word. Pray, Heavenly Father, that you continue to pour into pastor so that he may pour out to your people, that we may have listening ears to hear what it is that you're saying to us. Pray, Heavenly Father, that you strengthen him as he pours out. Pray, Heavenly Father, that you continue to fill him so we will overflow to your people. Pray, Heavenly Father, that we, your people be in a receiving mode to hear what it is that you're saying to us. Pray, Heavenly Father, that we don't just be hearers of your word, but we become doers of your word. Praise another blessing. We ask your son, Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Dee. Amen. Appreciate that word so much. All right, family, let's arm up. Let's get ready. Get your word out. I was, I, 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 I thought the Holy Spirit was going to lead, lead us to deal with this this week. Elder Thompson prayed on Sunday. It was such a powerful prayer. He he mentioned that we are heading into warfare. And uh, he talked about that, putting on the whole armor, putting on the whole armor of God. And uh, yeah, I felt an unction in my spirit when he said that. But uh but God is God is God is has, has us on this path right now where we're looking at what I call our engagement pathway, our, our strategy for reaching, for growing the body of Christ. Our gifts, our passion, our story, I call it our GPS, where we're looking for souls searching for souls, compelling men to come. Gifts, we're discovering our gifts. God, the Holy Spirit is, is, is directing us and leading us in how to identify these gifts. Part one of our training as ambassadors and then part two, we're gonna look at our passion. Really excited to see what God is how God is going to lead us in in into discovering our passion, that that intense desire or enthusiasm for something. That's 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 innate. God has put that inside of you. We asked the question weeks ago. What, what are you passionate about? Uh, your giftings and your your destiny is is, is tied up into that. Your passion. What, what could you what what could you engage in every day, even if you wasn't compensated for it? But you, it just gives you so much contentment and peace and, and energy and 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 that's a part of your calling, your mission, your passion. So I think God is gonna allow us to look deeply inside of ourselves when we get to part two 
of the ambassador training. That's that's going to be really exciting because we know serving God is a heart thing. It's an inward thing. <clears throat> Man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. So that, that's going to be a blessing. And then we just tell our story. We know what our gifts are. We know what we're excited about, what, what, what enthuses us about life. And then we just tell our story. We, we put those elements together and uh, we share our story with people. And that's witnessing. That's evangelizing. And this is simplifying that process for us so we don't get so uh, encumbered with thinking it's something so deep and all these anointed people can do that and, and I'm not worthy of that. And really, I want to look at these gifts because I'm, I'm sensing in my spirit that, that the enemy is putting the spirit of fear into some of us. And uh, and God said, "This is this is not this is not this is not a process that you are are, are to be fearful of." Um, in fact, those of you who have your 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 inventory, I want you to just just pull it out. We're not gonna we're not gonna engage it tonight. We're gonna wait till everybody everybody receive theirs. But if you have it close by you. I started on mine today. I'm going to complete mine probably. And we're going to open it up together and go through it together on Wednesday because I want to make sure everybody is clear on how to complete it. Uh, yeah. But this is this is not anything to, 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 to be afraid of. Uh, yeah, don't, don't let the enemy put that, that spirit of fear. This is going to be a blessing to you to discover your your innate spiritual gifts for the Holy Spirit to direct you into to discovering what those gifts are and how God is going to use you with those gifts. That that's 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 to be determined. So right now we just we just discovering what what God has already put inside of us and what ignites us. And that that's going to be a great thing. That's, that's going to be a blessing. 1 Peter 4, 7 through 11. As we, I just want to, as we delve into this process, um, why is it a blessing to you to, to discover your gifts? Why is this important to God and, and to the body of Christ? 1 Peter chapter 4, we looked at that when I believe last week, this scripture, talking about spiritual gifts. John, when people are, are are coming in, you can see you can see them coming in, right? Yes, sir. Okay. You get a bit, a bit but you can admit them. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So I won't worry about that. All right. First Peter chapter four. Verses seven through eleven. Yeah. Yeah. Family, this is, I really believe this is one of the reasons why God is leading us in this direction. Uh, because not only has God transformed the church, uh, but Peter's writing here in, in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 7, he says, but the end of all things is at hand. Yeah, I, I really do believe that. I really do believe that. I think, I think all of us are should be aware, pretty clear, that the signs of the judgment are all around us and God is soon to come. And Peter says here in this word, he says, because the end of all things is at hand, therefore be serious and watchful in your prayers. That's what our devotion, our Jesus calling us tonight, that's what the devotion was about prayer communion with god be sure that's a daily thing for you and I, i'll keep reiterating that it's so going to be so critical that you have that time with god every day because the end of things 
are at hand, is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. Verse 8, and above all things, have fervent love for one another. For love will cover a multitude of sins. Verse 9 says, be hospitable to one another without grumbling. As each one has received a gift, minister it to one another. See, see, God has already given you these gifts. They're innate. They're in you. Your personality, your talents, your abilities are all intertwined in your gifts that God has given you. And God desires that we use these to minister to each other as good Amen. stewards. Amen. As good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Yeah. See, God has given you the grace to use these gifts. This is one of the things that hindered the church for thousands of years that we were not utilizing the gifts that God had given us is the reason why the church was not making the impact in the world that Christ wanted us to have as a, as a corporate body and even in our own individual lives. And God has called us back to this. And so this is, this is very exciting and very powerful. Verse 11 says, if anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it as with the ability which God supplies. See how God is going to use you and utilizing your gifts. God has God will give you the ability to do that. You don't you won't be doing any of this in yourself. So you don't have to fear that. Think you're not worthy or you can't do it or you're not good enough or God is not going to be pleased. The Holy Spirit is going to be guiding and leading you. Verse 11, if anyone speaks, let him speak as of the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it as with the ability which God supplies. That in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So God is going to get glory out of this. God is going to get glory out of your life. And this is going to be a blessing to you. It's going to be a blessing to you. Last week, I mentioned the five-fold gifts. I wanted to go back uh, as we wait one more week before we start out in our own spiritual gifts inventory, finding our own spiritual gifts. We're going to walk through that process together. Beginning next Wednesday. I think that's the first Wednesday in November. So that's a good place to start. I uh, wanted to highlight again what's called the five-fold gifts of ministry. Okay. One is a teaching moment uh, because I want you to be aware when you hear that term, when you hear that terminology used, the five-fold gifts, you will know uh, what people are talking about when they say the five-fold gifts. So these are the gifts that God intentionally equipped the body of Christ with. Many gifts God have given to, 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 to saints and believers, but these five in particular God spoke directly into the body of Christ. And they are called the five-fold gifts. Now, all of your individual gifts will somehow be intertwined in one of these or many or several of these. So I wanted you to be aware of, of the five-fold gifts. Ephesians 4, chapter 7 through 16, we're going to read. And these are the five-fold gifts, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. Now, so your own individual gifts may fit into one of these categories as well. But Paul talks about them. I like the way he expounds it in, in, in Ephesians chapter 4.
beginning at verse number seven. Spiritual gifts. He says, but to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. There it is again. See, you have grace. You have grace for this. You have grace for this. To utilize the gifts that God have given you. You have been given grace for this. You don't have to fear this. You don't have to worry about whether or not you're going to be effective in utilizing your gifts. You have been given grace to each one of us Grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. So how in-depth you are with your gift, God has already determined that. How many people you're going to impact with your gift, God has already determined that. God just wants you to be faithful in utilizing your gifts. So you can't do that until you first identify what your gifts are. So that's why this process is going to be such a blessing to you. Verse 8, therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. When Christ ascended back to the spirit realm to be with his father, to be with our God, he gave gifts to men. He gave us these gifts. Verse 9, now this he ascended, what does it mean? But that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth. Verse 10, he who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens that he might feel all things. So this is when Christ, um, during the crucifixion, you know, he went went into hell, took the keys of hell from Satan, descended down into the uttermost parts of the earth, came back up, walked among men, tarried with 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 with, with brothers and sisters, ascended back to heaven, and gave gifts, left gifts with us to carry on the mission of Christ. And this is the fivefold. Verse 11, and he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. Okay. So God himself dropped these gifts in the hearts of men who would become a part of the body of Christ. God himself designated these gifts for the church. He himself, verse 11, gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. Now, why did God give these gifts? I got one question. Yes, sir. Where did the... Uh where reverend come from? Because I hear most people saying reverend. <laughs> reverend. I want to know about that. <laughs> if they call apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, why does everybody say reverend? That's a great question. That's a great question, Ronnie. Reverence, reverend comes from the word reverence. Reverence is just... A, 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 a term of respect. It's just a term of respect. So ministers throughout. It's not in the Bible. No, nah, you, well, you, no, nah, you don't see where a person is identified as a reverend. So that was, that was a man-made kind of ospolic term, a, a term of endurance, endurance kind of sort of, you know, ministers, they were called reverence, reverend so-and-so. Uh, just a way of identifying them as a minister or, you know, oh, way of identifying their ministry gifts. Yeah. But you don't see, you don't see in scripture where, you know, nobody was reverend this and reverend that. No. So these were gifts. Reverend is a title. 
So that, you know, it's just a, just a term of respect that, that, that men started to, to, uh, you know, it's nothing you, I get, you earn it, I guess, well, I like call it, like I'm Dr. Dunstan. So doctor is a title that I earn, uh, through education. So when you become a minister, uh, you know, then you're referred to as Reverend so-and-so. And, you know, in modern day church, you really don't hear it a lot. You know, it's more minister. Mm -hmm. um, I don't even know the last time I referred it to anybody as, as Reverend so-and-so. It's usually minister, uh, which kind of means the same thing. But reverence is more a, a, a term of re respect or, or reverencing someone. Like we pay reverence, so we pay homage to that. To something yeah Ex excellent question though and you're right that that is not a again it's not a gift it's just a title okay but these were the the five gifts called the recognizes the five fold gifts that christ specifically left for the church and why did he give us these gifts Why were these gifts given to the church? Okay. Verse 12, we're still in Ephesians verse 7, verse 12, for the equipping, for equipping the saints for the work of ministry. So, now these are the fivefold gifts of the fine gifts that God specifically designated into the church. But all of the gifts combined are given to the body of Christ, these five particularly for the equipping the saints for the work of ministry. He says that in verse 12. And verse 11, and he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry. So those five individual giftings that are given to men and women are used specifically to equip the body of Christ, to equip the people in the church for the work of ministry. Verse 12, again, for the edifying of the body of Christ. That's what the pastors, evangelists, and teachers and apostles do. Edify the body of Christ. They edify the body of Christ. They, they provide instruction for improving, improvement uh, within the body of Christ. Uh, provide uh, inst to instruct or improve someone morally and spiritually and intellectually. So these gifts are given to, to really minister to what I call the total man, spirit, mind, and body. You know, uh, edifying the body of Christ. You know, some of you have the gift of, of edification. We're going to discover that. That's a powerful gift to have, to, to edify, to build up, to encourage, uh, to improve to grow, to help grow the body of Christ. Why will get why are these gifts given? Verse 13. Till we all come to the unity of the faith. See. Again, one of the reasons I believe the church was not as effective as, 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 as God created us to be, you know, because of unity. I think historically in the in, in the church, unity has always been an issue. You know, if there was if there was one way the enemy could always tear up a church, it's because of lack of unity, disunity. You know, the devil was good at that. You know, bringing division, and 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 one of the reasons God gave us these gifts is so we could have unity utilizing our gifts together, keep us together. We're going to see that as, as we continue to, 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 to identify our gifts, but to bring unity within the faith. Verse 13, till we all come to the unity. See, 
We come to unity. We work our gifts and it brings us together as a unified body. See, by so many of us not utilizing our gifts, it was very difficult for the church to stay unified. You know, and we saw that even in the in the, in the in the antiquity of the church, the origin of the church, the beginning of the church. While we have so many different denominations, that ain't in the Bible either, Ronnie. You don't see Baptist, Pentecostal, Seventh Day Adventists. AME, you'll see none of that in scripture. All that every time a man had a different idea about how to engage in religion, they, they would just go off and start their own thing. And that's how you had all these different de de denominations to form. The Bible says we got one body, one Christ, and one Lord. And so now I believe God is bringing us back to this utilizing our gifts so we can have unity within the faith to increase our knowledge of the son of God teachers. That's why God gives us teachers still verse 13. For the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. See? That's why these gifts were given to the church to increase the knowledge of the Son of God, to share knowledge, to learn together, to study. Scripture said we have to study to show ourselves approved. Workman, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of God is why give us pastors. The word of the Lord of Jeremiah says, I give you pastors after my own heart that will feed you with knowledge. This is the purpose of the fivefold gifts, to increase the knowledge of the Son of God. For years, people was coming to church, but they wasn't learning. And they weren't learning about God and, and, and growing in their knowledge of God. So therefore, they were not growing into the maturity. That's what he talks about, 13, to grow and mature in the fullness of Christ. See, what we were doing, we would just get people in the seats and just glad they was there in the seats. And that was it. You know, if they came to Sunday school, they got a little bit of knowledge. You know, a preaching moment, you can't get a lot of knowledge out of preaching. You know, you, you're trying to break the word of God down where everybody can understand. And then you got to put the, you know, the, the PR in it and the entertainment in it, especially for the black preacher. All of that, all of that makes up the preaching uh, by the foolishness of preaching men are saved, but they don't grow in knowledge by preaching. That only comes through studying the word, being taught the word of God. That's why I'm so excited about, about you all, your commitment to being taught the word of God, because this is what God wants us to do, to grow and mature into the fullness of Christ. Salvation is just the first step, but so many times we get saved and that was it. We come to church have good church, but that was it. You know. So God is, is, is refocused us and we're, we're excited about these gifts because these gifts were put there so we could grow in our knowledge, so we could grow and mature. We talk about that word perfection. That's what, that's what God means when you see the word perfection in scripture, it means maturity. And that's, that's what these gifts were given to us. So we will come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man. That means a mature man and woman to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. See, that's what God wants to. Scripture says we go from glory to glory. See, you know, each year, each year we should we should get closer. We should grow closer to God. Our service should improve. Our giving should improve. Our living should improve. 
our, 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 our commitment to spiritual discipline in our life should improve. Every year we should grow and grow and grow. See, and that typically was not happening in the church. And 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 and, and a lot of it was attributed to the pastors. You know, our focus was 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 not where it should have been. Because we were the we we're the ones that God have given to the church to feed them knowledge and to grow them to help them mature. But it's also the saints you know, take some responsibility in that as well because we were not growing so we couldn't help other people grow because we were not growing. You know, we were saved and satisfied on our way to heaven, you know, and we didn't really care if anybody else got saved or not. You know, and God said that that's, that that was not the why I created the church. That was not the mission. And now God has us back on mission. And I like this in verse 14 because this is so critical now. In these days in which we live, the reason why these gifts were given to the church, verse 14. That we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting See. by these gifts being utilized and by us growing and maturing and edifying and equipping the saints now we can discern when we are being deceived and family i'm telling you that's that that part of the gift discernment has it has to be critical in this last day and i'm i'm gonna I'm deal with that gift i'm gonna the, the gift of discernment of I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to just deal with that gift in a, in a very specific way. Because you just, you, 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 you can't believe anything you hear. You have to be able to discern what you hear, what you see. The enemy is real deceptive. He is the father of lies. You know? But he can twist the truth. He can twist the lies so 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 deceptively that people take it as gospel and they believe it as truth. And as believers, we have to be able to discern when we are being deceived. Even being deceived by men and women who call themselves preachers and apostles and spiritual teachers. I mean, you just we just see what's happening in the last 24 months since COVID. You know, some of these pastors, man, some of the things that they're teaching people, some of the things that they're espousing from pulpits, you know, it's just unbelievable. It's just unbelievable. But God said in the last days, this is what we will see happening. You know, there are pastors who they tell it, who are telling their people don't even take the vaccine. It's, it's demonic, you know, it's the mark of the beast. I mean, just this this craziness. And so we have to gird ourselves and be be in a position and have our spirit severed to the point where we can we can discern truth. The truth will set us free. But you gotta know when you're hearing truth and when you're Amen. hearing the lie. Amen. I mean, mm -hmm. they, I mean, you know, silver tongue people can make a lie. Some people can lie so good they can lie right in your face, and you don't even know they're lying. You know, but the spirit of discernment, you know, God gives us that spirit of discernment, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, so so God is developing that in us as 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 we unpack our identify our gifts, and then first fifteen, so we can speak truth in love. That's important. That's important that we be able to do that as we love each other. You know, we love our brothers and sisters. We need to straighten them. You know, we need to be able to do that in love. You know, the problem we had with in the church is we didn't know how to, you know, if we saw our brother or sister in error, you know, instead of praying for them and going to them in love, you know, we talk about it. Okay. All right. If I... If I was at church, I say I ain't getting no amens on that. But look, I've been pastoring long enough to know. 
And I've been in church literally all my life. You know, it's one thing to speak truth and love, and it's another thing to be talking behind people back, you know, and criticizing. That's 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 not the way of God. That's not why God sent gifts into the church. You know, he grows us and matures us so we can do that. So we can speak the truth and love. And what happens when we utilize these gifts? Verse 16. What happens? Verse 15, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things unto him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body, here we go, everybody, it's everybody, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies. See, every single joint, every single person has a role to play in this. Yes, your gift is important. My gift is important. Nobody's gift is more important than anybody else's gift. But you have to utilize your gift within the body of Christ. Every joint. Join and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share. When we first started talking about this, I think you made that statement. Everybody got to do their part. Everybody have to do their part. And I'm excited about the growth, the spiritual growth and the numerical growth that we'll see in friendship as a result of everybody doing their part. When everybody does their part, it causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. So these are these five folk gifts. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. Now, when you hear that term used, you understand what people are talking about. Apostles. Um, it's interesting now that we're seeing more uh, apostles. We're going to get to that. We're going to actually look at look at these gifts, these five in depth. Uh, not in depth, though, because um, I won't have time. But, but I want to... Uh, I just want to I just want to open up unpack these these quickly, uh, and y'all help me with some of this reading in the scripture. Apostles, somebody find Luke, Luke six, twelve and thirteen, and somebody find Ephesians two, nineteen through twenty two, talking about apostles. What does the Bible say about apostles? Luke chapter six, verses twelve and thirteen. Who got that one? Luke 6, 12 and 13. Now it came to pass in those days that he went out to the mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. And when it was day, he called his disciples to himself. And from them he chose 12, whom he also named apostles. Yes, yes, yes. Go ahead. Uh, that's good. Go ahead down through uh, verse 16. These are the names. Now, the, that's the difference between apostles and disciples. Okay, you get a lot. You get a lot of knowledge tonight, a lot of learning. These initial 12 that, that Christ called, they were apostles. Okay. 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 Simon, whom he also named Peter. And Andrew, his brother, James and John, Philip and Bartholomew, Matthew and Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon, called Zelot, Judas, the son of James, and Judas Iscriot, who also became a traitor. Yes, yes. So these were the initial apostles. That's correct. Uh, Ephesians 2 19 now so so what's the difference between an apostle and a disciple we know the apostles were these initial 12 and now we see more more people are being called into the apostolic ship now and 
we, we God is going to reveal to us why we see that happening now. In the last days, again, God is taking us back to, to the future, back to the future. So what, what would be the difference between an apostle and a disciple? What is a disciple? Disciple is a follower of Christ. Absolutely. Absolutely. A follower of the teachings of Christ. Mm -hmm. The disciple is. All of us are All disciples. All of us disciples. Right? Yeah. Even apostles are disciples. But mm -hmm. all of us are disciples. You have a whole denomination called the Disciples of Christ. That's, that's where my mentor is. He's going to be with us real soon. Uh, he's been elevated in that denomination. Now he's traveling all over the world doing doing great ministry. Uh, he's going to be Amen. with us. But uh, yeah, so all of us are disciples, followers of the teachings of Christ. You know, those of us who follow the teachings of Christ, I always, I always tell my students about Christians. You know, what is a Christian? That's a Christian, a follower of Christ, a follower of the teachings of Christ. So the disciples were uh, these initial 12 that were called by Christ to go out and to start the church. Ephesians 2, 19, who got that one? I forgot that one. Um, I'll be reading from uh, NIV. Uh, Ephesians 2, 19, reads, uh, consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people, and also members of his household. Built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ, Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone, in him the whole building is joined together and raised to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you two are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. Amen, amen, amen. So all of us have, have, have anchorings of these, this apostolic gift. All of us are being built up uh, to fit together and to grow together in the church, in the holy temple. So all of these gifts are, are being utilized. Uh, and I even see them now as, as God is leading us in this way. We're, we're beginning to identify these gifts now as, as they're emerging in the church. I saw some of them coming forth Sunday. It was, it, it was powerful. Okay, prophets, Acts 21, 7 through 10, and Romans 12, 3 through 8. Somebody get that, Acts 21, 7 through 10. Prophets, the prophetic gift. And as we walk through these, you're going to begin to see these gifts become more operational in our ministry, and that's, that's going to be a blessing. Acts 21. Verse 7 through 10. Prophet. Somebody read that. Verse 7 to read. And when he had finished our voyage from, from Tyre, we came to Ptolemus. I pronounced that right? How do you pronounce that? Ptolemy? Yeah, that's good. Greeted the brethren and stayed with them one day. On the next day, we who were Paul's companions departed and came to Caesarea and entered the house of Philip the evangelist, who was one of the seven, and stayed with him. Now this man had four virgin daughters who prophesied. And as yeah. we stayed, and as we stayed many days. A certain prophet named Agabus came down from Judea. Yes, I, I think I, I, I like that. I wanted that one read because I wanted the sister to, to see that. Uh, I heard a, a, a women minister minister on this passage recently. It was powerful. Uh, verse number nine, she says, now, he says, now this man had four virgin daughters who prophesied. So so prophets, women can be prophets as well. And I wanted the women to be very clear on that. Um, again, in the history of the church, we had real issues with 
people telling the body of Christ that, that women weren't supposed to be doing that. Women couldn't preach and women weren't supposed to be in a pulpit and, and, and women couldn't be prophets. And that wasn't even biblical. That's what I could never understand how we were preaching stuff that was not even in the Bible, but to satisfy our own whims. Romans 12, three through eight. I'm gonna read that, Romans 12, three through eight. Yeah, this is good. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God hath dwelt to every man the measure of faith. Is there an echo behind me? No, you're good. Okay, okay. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office. So we bring many are one body in Christ, and every one member one of another. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, would the prophecy let us prophesy according to the pro proportion of faith? Our ministry let us wait on our ministering, or he that teacheth on teaching or he that exhorteth on exhortation, and he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Let yes. love be without dissimulation, Ab abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Amen. 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 That's good. That's good. That's good. What I want to, uh, yeah, this is just talking about the, the, the prophets, the, the gifts within the body, the prophetic gifts uh, for us. We have many members in the body, but all the members do not have the same function or the same gifts. So we being many, verse five, so we being many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given. See, I'm just keep iterating that tonight. God has given you grace for this. You got grace for this. Amen. You got Amen. utilize Amen. Your gifts. You don't have to be afraid of this. The Holy Spirit Amen. got you. The Holy Spirit got you. Okay, I got to move quickly. Uh, evangelist, is that where we're at? Acts 8, 4 through 8. Evangelist, let's go there. Somebody read that one quickly. Therefore, those who were scattered when everyone preaching the word, then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them. And the multitudes with one according had the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of many who were possessed and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed. And there were there was great good in that city. Amen. Amen. This was talking about Philip the Evangelist. Mm -hmm. this is my mom named me after this guy. Uh, that's why my mind is only spelled with one L. Uh, my dad's mom did the same. Uh, but that, that's a very powerful story. I'm going to let you read that on your own, 26 through 40. That was the uh, when, he, when he evangelized the Ethiopian eunuch. And uh, you've heard that story preached several times. Uh, he saw this man uh, reading inscription. The man didn't, didn't understand what he was reading. And, and the Holy Spirit led Philip to him. And uh, Philip explained scripture to him. And then when they were riding by a body of water, you know, Philip, he said, well, what's keeping me from being baptized right now? He accepted Christ right now. And that's the work of the evangelists. They, they, they've they, been given the gift to preach the word of God in such a way that it draws people. Mm -hmm. you know, we thank God for that. Pastors, uh, 1 Timothy 3, 1 through 7. You know, Paul Paul did a lot of uh, mentoring uh, to Timothy, his, his son in the ministry to get him ready uh, for his calling. First Timothy 3, 1 through 7. Somebody read that one. 
tonight. Uh, First Timothy, the word of the Lord reads, this is a faithful saying. If a man desires the position of a bishop, he desires a good work. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, temperate, temperate, sober-minded, of good behavior, hospitable, able to teach, not uh, not given to wine, not violent, not greedy for money, but gentle. Not quarrelsome, I'm sorry, not covetous, one who rules his own house well, having his children in submission with all reverence. For if a man does not know how to rule his own house, how will he take care of the church of God? Not a novice, less being puffed up with pride, he fall into the same condemnation as the devil. Moreover, he must have a good testimony among those who are outside, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. Amen. Amen. I, I wanted to highlight that one. Uh, oh, it's really qualifications for overseers. And uh, that was a term that I really liked, fell in love with in seminary. And I brought that to friendship and I started calling our leaders, the heads of our ministries, overseers. Uh, but a bishop, I wanted to highlight that because a lot of times you hear, well, who's a bishop? Well, a bishop is really a pastor's pastor. When you have what's called ecclesiastical denominations or ministries, that means they have they have hierarchies. So you'll have a group of churches that have a pastor, and then there'll be a bishop that would be uh, designated uh, to rule over those pastors. So really, when you hear the term bishop, uh, a bishop is really a pastor's pastor. And in, in, uh, in, in the Baptist church, uh, we don't have that type hierarchy. Uh, the pastor in the Baptist denomination uh, really is the, the sole authority. But like in the, in the Methodists, uh, in, in, in the in Episcopalians, you have, you have a hierarchy of bishops. So these bishops are appointed, they're, they're elected, and they're given a, a, a geographical location of churches. And then, so they could become like the pastor's pastor of, of, of all of those churches. So that's, that's, that's a bishop. That's what a bishop is, a pastor's pastor. First Peter 5, 1 through 4, real quickly. Somebody read that one. First Peter 5, 1 through 4. I got you, Pastor. Uh, First Peter 5, uh, reading from NIV. To the elders among you, I appeal as a fellow elder and witness of Christ's suffering, who also was share in the glory to be revealed. Verse 2, be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, watching over them, not because you must, but because you are willing, and as God wants you to be, not pursuing dishonesty gain, but eager to serve. Verse 3, not lording it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. Verse 4, and when the chief shepherd appears, you'll receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. Amen. 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 God speaks clearly to, to pastors. That's why he said, I give you pastors after my heart. Uh, you know, it used to bother me that that, that churches would take it upon themselves to discipline pastors uh, when pastors will fall or pastors weren't doing what they thought they ought to be doing. You, you don't ever have to do that. God will handle that. God will handle that. God always disciplines anybody that God has placed and trusted with the care of his spiritual children. God is going to check them. They may think they're getting away with a lot of stuff, but 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 in the end, yeah, yeah, God is gonna God is and and, and even the, the students that are trained for ministry, I make sure that they're very clear on that because God is very serious when it comes to this. You know, uh, and I won't get into all of that because I'm running out of time. Teachers, Romans 12, 3 through 8, are teachers. 
Romans 12, 3 to 8. We're almost done. Teachers, somebody read that. Romans 12, 3 through 8. For I say through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function. So we, being many, are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. Having then gifts different, differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us them, if prophesied, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith, our ministry, let us use it in our ministering. He who teaches and teaches, he, he who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with liberty, who, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Amen. Amen. So I wanted to close there again to to help us understand that this this, you know, it's interesting that the Bible uses the terminology and we've seen that on several occasions. Um, verse four, that we, we are many members in one body. Um, uh, having then verse six, having having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. Again, the God has given us the grace to use these gifts. And so we, 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 can, we, can, we can feel good about the fact that once we've identified our gifts, that God have already placed inside of us, that God is then gonna lead us and show us how to utilize those gifts to the glory of God and to the edification of the saints, that we are members, members of one another. You know, I see that so often, verse five. So we being many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. See, the church was never, never received like that, that we are actually members of one another. You know. That, that, that's the essence of, 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 of the, the body of Christ, that we are knit together. We are one body. And, we, and, and that's why these God's word talks about bringing us into the unity. See, see. Man, I tell you, this is good. All right. I wanted to close. I'm going to close tonight. I wanted to, uh, I want you to look at these list of gifts. And I want you to select one. I have, and you can take a, you can take a snap of this. I have, I've deleted out the, uh, I've taken out the fivefold that we that we looked at a few minutes ago, but I want you to select one, and I want you to pray about that, and I want you to do some spiritual research on the one you select. Wisdom, knowledge, exhortation discerning of spirits, giving, faith, helps, giving. Okay, I had given in that twice. That must have been a, a spiritual, we call it a Freudian slip, but it must have been a, a mercy, missionary, hospitality, miracles, healing, tongues, interpretation of tongues, voluntary poverty, intercession, deliverance, service, leading worship, leadership, administration, celibacy. I want you to select one of those gifts. And just this week, meditate on it, do some, do some spiritual research on it. And we're gonna share, we're gonna share together next week as we're gonna open our inventory next week and get started together uh, working on our inventory. And uh, but I, I just got a spiritual inkling that this this one that you select 
It might be one that you've been thinking about. It might be one that appeals to you. It might be one that you already know you have. And maybe you're not walking in it. But uh, select one. Meditate on that one this week. And I'm gonna ask you next week which one you selected. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put you on the spot nothing like that. I just wanna I might have you put in the chat box which one you selected, and uh, just want to see how how the Holy Spirit is is gonna direct you in identifying your gifts. Okay. All right. And we can always send you the PowerPoint. Those of you who have the uh, have the inventory already in hand, all of these gifts are listed in your inventory. I just selected the ones. I think it's 28 that's listed in the inventory. And so I, su I subtracted the five-fold ones out of this list uh, since we already kind of went in through those apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. So that leaves these this list. So I want you to select one. Pray about it. And... Uh, let God speak to you about that one that you selected. And it may be one of your top two or three. Once you complete the inventory, it may be one of your top two or three. Okay. All Pastor, do you have any more of those books? Or are you waiting for them to come in? No, they're here. April has them. So, okay. Oh, yeah, anybody I who did yeah, I don't can, have one. You can pick it up Sunday. You can pick it up Sunday. They came in this week. So she, oh, okay. And uh me and Shalana needs one as well. Okay. Okay. Uh, we ordered, I think I think I ordered 20. What well, I meant more did I order? 20 more? 25 more? 15? 25? I'm sorry. Um 15. Okay. Okay. So everybody should be able to get one. Uh and then we're gonna start next week. Uh, physically going through it together. We're going to go through it together because I want to make sure everybody does it correctly because uh, this is, uh, I think the Holy Spirit is really doing up to something with this, helping you to identify the gifts that God has given you. And when we begin to work these gifts together as a spirit family, that's going to be a powerful thing to see these gifts in operation in our ministry, in our community, in our state, and in our world. Friendship is going to be something to reckon with, but I'm excited. I want a family, I want you to pray for Q and his family. Uh, the home going for his grandma is uh, Saturday at 2 at Simonia Baptist Church. Keep them in prayer. Uh, Q, I know you was close to grandma, man. Tell us tell us, tell us, us one or two things about grandma that we, that, that we didn't know about grandma. Uh, I would say one of the things that uh, with most people that knew her, um, one thing that she was, and I probably that's about the background noise on that baseball game, um, is that she was love, man. Um, no matter where you saw her, uh, if she was busy going through something, she always showed love to any and everybody. Um, you can be a perfect stranger, um, you can be an older person, a young person, and she always showed love. Um, we're having a big family. I don't know how she raised eight kids and helped take care of all of her grandkids. She's just a strong woman. Uh, she's 83 years old, and they don't make them like her no more. And uh, she's going to be missed. It's been tough for us. But I thank y'all for your prayers, your calls, your texts. I um, really appreciate it. Amen. Amen. Yeah, they don't make them like that no more. I think they make them like that. They just, they were just, they had just had an extra layer, uh, that generation, because of what, what they had to endure, man. God just blessed them. So we, uh, she has uh, moved on to the ancestral realm now. She's watching over us right now. And so we're going to celebrate her life uh, this Saturday at 2. Uh, Pastor Yvette Davis is coming Sunday for the Women's Empowerment Service. Let me tell you something. This woman of God is so anointed. You think her husband blessed us last week. This woman is powerful. And I believe in my heart she has a word for us. And I asked last week, every woman, every woman connected to friendship. I want you in the house. I want you in the house unless you were, uh, you know, got pre preconceived medical condition or you not feeling well. Other than that, it's time we start making our way back to the house. And I think for the women, this is going to be a, uh, a perfect time to come home. Uh, 
bet it's gonna bless us. I'm just, I'm already leaping in my spirit about the word that God has given her. We're going to, uh, we're going to honor Kalithia. Uh, two of the women are going to uh, bring reflections uh, about our friend, our daughter, Kalithia, who, who, who made her way to the ancestral realm last week. The service was beautiful. Uh, we had two members of friendship to go and represent us there. And uh, it was a beautiful ceremony. The children are doing well. We have some things uh, we're doing for the children. Setting up a scholarship in her name for the children. Um, so we're going to uh, release some balloons at the end of service, at the end of worship on Sunday in her honor. Um, so God is good. God is good. And uh, so we want every woman to bring a woman. Bring a woman to that service on Sunday. It's going to be a blessing. All right. I'm going to close this in prayer. Father, we just bless you. We just honor you. We thank you for this. We just thank you for what you're doing in your world, what you're doing in the body of Christ, what you're doing in the church, but especially what you're doing for us at Friendship and our friends and our family and those who are connected to us. Father, we know that you're getting us ready. As grandma used to say, for that great day, you're soon to come, but you with us still much work for us to do. And you're preparing us, you're growing us, and you're training us to do the work, to get as many people as we love and know into the body of Christ, into the kingdom. For it is your will that nobody is lost, that nobody perish. Father, we pray a special blessing for Q and his family, his grandma, her children, that you will keep them encouraged, that you will bless them, God. We know the graveyard service is going to be a blessing. Thank you for Kalithia and her family. Thank you for my spirit father, who we celebrated his going home on Saturday. It was a wonderful celebration. Thank you for the marriage, the celebration for trying to see C. It was a beautiful celebration. God, keep them. Keep them. Marriage is honorable. Keep them, God. Keep them in your, in your will. Bless them and their families. Continue to bless friendship, God. We're just so grateful for what you're doing in our lives. And we love you so much. Keep us safe. Protect us, God, in this mad and evil world. We give you praise for all things. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.